the Delta variant um, has quickly become the predominant strain here in the United States, much like other parts of the world. And um, I think as recently as last week, the CDC announced it represents about 83% of all new COVID cases. Um, one of the concerns relative to Delta is uh, there certainly seems to be some indication that it uh, is more transmissible and can spread more rapidly. All the things that we have been doing uh, for over a year and a half continue to work. Uh, masking, distancing, uh, hand hygiene, uh, good ventilation, uh, but the most important thing that we can do to prevent infections is to become fully vaccinated. Well, the good news is the vaccines are not only very effective, but there's also data to suggest that those who are vaccinated um, carry fewer viral particles uh, in the respiratory tract, which makes them less likely to actually spread the disease to somebody else, even if they don't have symptoms. The vaccines are uh, incredibly effective at preventing the most serious complications of COVID-19, which is hospitalizations and deaths. Um, the, uh, they also are very good at preventing symptomatic disease in general. However, what we found with the Delta variant is that we are seeing some more cases of people with uh, symptomatic disease who have been fully vaccinated. Uh, the good news is they tend to be less severely ill and very few of those individuals actually end up in the hospital. There aren't really good data to select one vaccine above another one relative to the Delta variant. Uh, studies are ongoing. Uh, the good news is uh, a full vaccination series, whether it's two doses of Moderna or Pfizer, or even a single dose of the Johnson Johnson vaccine, is still the best protection against uh, severe illness. As long as the virus continues to circulate, uh, there's always the possibility of new variants. Uh, over time, viruses can develop mutations naturally, and some of those may uh, select for advantages, which means they could become more transmissible or they could be more severe. Uh, and since this virus has been circulating worldwide for some time now, uh, that's a lot of virus particles that have a, an opportunity to potentially mutate over time. So our best protection uh, to minimize that or to ultimately eliminate that is to really focus on getting as many people vaccinated as possible. Well, I don't have any uh, inside information relative to the FDA, but um, I do believe that they do not want to shortchange their existing process. Uh, they are probably under a lot of pressure to uh, fully approve the vaccines that are currently uh, authorized under the emergency use authorization. Uh, however, uh, they might come under some criticism if they did that um, without using their uh, normal processes. So I think they're being very deliberate to make sure that the data that they review and uh, the process that they use is the same that they would otherwise do for any other vaccine to ensure safety when they make that announcement. Hospitalizations are on the rise, uh, both nationally and locally. Uh, here in San Antonio, uh, it's less than a month ago, we probably had around 120 hospitalized uh, patients with COVID-19, and uh, we're close to around 400 in all of the hospitals now. And so that's a significant increase in a very short period of time. Um, we're also seeing that in pockets throughout the nation. Uh, what we're also seeing both nationally and locally is that uh, the individuals who are being admitted with COVID-19 are almost exclusively uh, unvaccinated people, which also sort of supports the, the benefits of vaccination in preventing severe disease. So the CDC had uh, not too long ago uh, updated their masking recommendations uh, for those who were fully vaccinated, indicating that in certain uh, situations that uh, it wasn't as necessary for them uh, to wear masks in certain scenarios. Uh, those recommendations have not changed, however, uh, for healthcare organizations, where they've continued to recommend masking and face coverings for staff and providers and patients and visitors. And so we've adopted that 
as well. And we've also strongly encouraged uh, those individuals who are fully vaccinated to also consider uh, wearing masks and even the non-clinical areas to uh, for add a further layer of uh, safety. Everyone responds differently to the vaccines, whether you're immunocompromised or not. And so even though it's an extra layer, um, there's always a possibility that either because of a, an immune status situation or because of their own uh, response, you know, if they're otherwise healthy, that their ability to um, prevent transmission could be affected. Probably a good idea to always evaluate uh, the risks versus the benefits uh, while the pandemic continues. Uh, and that could include travel, uh, depending on the nature of your travel, whether you're traveling alone or um, in public transportation, uh, what your destination might be, your ability to protect yourself uh, even beyond vaccination in terms of wearing masks or distancing. And similarly, so for um, other situations where you might just find yourself uh, in gatherings indoors, all those things um, you should probably consider uh, along with your immuniz immunization status uh, as to whether you need to either change those plans or find other ways to add to your layers of protection. The Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices with the CDC is looking at data to determine whether there are subpopulations who may be uh, appropriate to receive additional doses of the COVID vaccine. That may include those who are immunocompromised or others who are potentially at higher risk. Well, right now, the recommendation is to complete a full vaccine series uh, with a single vaccine, whether it be um, two doses of Pfizer, or two doses of Moderna, or even a single dose of the J&J. &J. There aren't a lot of data yet um, that indicate the additional protective benefits of mixing vaccines, although they are ongoing. There are studies uh, comparing um, the uh, efficacy of a combination of Pfizer and AstraZeneca, and some more recent ones that have included Moderna vaccine and one yet uh, to be uh, authorized in the US called Novavax. So they're looking at uh, combination vaccine studies uh, right now. Children do not appear to be at more severe risk from Delta, um, but they are at risk. And most concerningly, uh, children under the age of 12, simply because they are not eligible to be vaccinated. And the single most important way to protect someone against infection. And so by nature, the fact that they cannot be immunized, uh, that age group is probably more at risk. We know that children can carry the virus. Um, some of the studies that were done over the past year have indicated that children of younger ages tend to transmit the virus less uh, than children of older age groups, uh, teens, uh, or even older uh, toward the adult ages. So they can carry the virus. Um, they can certainly transmit the virus, but the youngest children uh, appear to be those less likely to transmit it than some of the older children. The American Academy of Pediatrics uh, recently came out with a recommendation for in-person learning in schools, uh, as well as that everyone who is eligible uh, should get vaccinated. Uh, they have also added uh, uh, that they support a layered uh, protective approach, which means that anyone uh, ages two years or older should also wear a mask regardless of their vaccination status.